Okay, what you see in front of you right now is our model VT400 map tray sealer. And our sales and service manager, Mr. Rick Hurd, is going to point out to you the controls. We're going to start with the vacuum gauge. That gauge is going to show you where the vacuum level is coming to during the vacuum cycle on the machine. Next, we have what's called the film rolling timer, which that unit there is going to time out how long the film winds through after a cycle to bring it ready to the next cycle. Then we move to our two temperature controllers. Your die has two zones and separate temperature controllers for each. And in red, you see the actual temperature, and in the green, you see the set point temperature. So we've got it set at 160, and I do believe this unit is in centigrade. So the next is your main control panel, which is a PNC01. It's a microprocessor control unit. You can have up to, I think, 13 different programs in it, and you can set in those programs or recipes. You can have different vacuum times. You can have different gas flush times. You can have different seal and cooling times. So if you have different products with different size, you know, with different films, then you can change it, although on this machine, you are limited by the fact that your die is set up for your round container, so that's all it's going to do. We'll be moving on to over on the other side of the VT400. We're going to go over the controls that are present here. Some of these are only used on certain occasions. We'll start off with the die lowering switch. That switch is used to lower the die down and back so it can be removed, which might need to be done for a maintenance reason or if you purchase another die and tray set and you're changing out from one to the other. The next one there is your film sensor switch, which its purpose is if you start using a printed film in the future, then that turns on the sensor that senses the mark on the film, the registration mark, so it will only move to the next set and therefore center your print on your containers. Right below those we have the emergency switch, which if you see anything at all going on with your cycle, some question coming up, Maybe you see a tray is popped up crooked. You can just hit that switch and immediately stop the cycle on it. Then your next switch there is the vacuum pump. And that will obviously be turned to the on position when you're doing map packaging, which is modified atmosphere. With this machine, if you are vacuuming, then you also have to gas flush. You cannot just do a vacuum, you'd crush your trays. However, with that switch off and the gas turned off, you can use the BT400 as just a tray sealer instead of a map unit. Moving over to the side of the machine, we have the main power switch. You would want that switch turned to the off position and it has a slot to put a lockout tag out tag in it so you can lock it out when you're doing maintenance or cleaning just make sure no one turns on the power inadvertently next to that is your film crater raise and lower it is going to rip up the roller and i'm going to change my focus a little bit so you can actually see that Rick's going to point to it and move the switch. That's for use when you're actually loading the machine. Then the last one is the green switch here. 
And that switch is for jogging your film. So when you're loading it, you've got it ready to load, then you can jog it through to where you're ready to start the operation. And if there's any, for instance, maybe you preferred to get some film over it, but then cut it off, you can use it for that as well. So those are all your basic controls. The only other controls on the machine, I'm going to come down to them. And that is on each side of the machine, you have one of these green palm buttons. And they both have to be actuated simultaneously, or the machine will not move the tray into the die area. So as you see now, we're actuating both trays moving into place and the machine cycling. All right, we're going to be back in a minute, and Rick's going to go through just... All right, what we have on the screen right now is the PNC-01 microprocessor control that is the heart of this machine's control system. And I'll correct uh, one thing uh, earlier, it said 13 programs, actually it is 14 programs. And right now Rick is going to talk you through setting up a program. We're setting up program number one right now. So go ahead and take it away, Rick. All right, well first thing you want to do is you want to select your program. And like Todd's telling you, 14 different programs. And there is a up and out there. Or here, this is program right above. When you select your program, you need to make sure that you're, you press and hold the button on that number, this green number right here, below program, is your program number. Right now it says 01. Now, in order for 1 to be the program selected, you have to actually hold the button until you see the 01 flashing. When you see 01 flashing, you have saved that program number. If you do not do this, it will default to the program you were using previously. So very important, like if you're going to switch to program, let's say 6, you go to press the there until 6 is on, hold it until 6 is flashing, now 6 is your safe program. So we're going to go back to program 1, hold the button on program 1, it's flashing, so now we know program 1 is safe. Now we want to adjust the settings. If you're going to do a seal only, and you're not doing any, any modified atmosphere uh, packaging, then basically you're, you're looking at seal only. So what we use are these, uh, these shift buttons right here to scroll these LEDs across. First one says vacuum, and you'll see that the red numbers right here indicate the amount of vacuum time. We can use these shift arrows to scroll to the different functions in the program, but we're going to start with the vacuum. You'll see the lights on the vacuum. The way to adjust this number is to use the plus or minus right here. Either you go up or you go down. And when you see like negative zero one, it's indicating one second of vacuum time. As you increase that up using the plus to add time, well that would indicate say 14 seconds of vacuum time. Now if you're going to be doing the seal only, you would want to have no vacuum on because you cannot vacuum without gas. So as I was telling you earlier, you must do a seal only, no vacuum, no gas, and there has to be a minimum of one second to run the cycle. Scroll across where it says gas. We're going to put zero on there as well because we're not going to do any gas here right now. We're just going to do a seal only function. Then you scroll to you come to seal one. This 3.0 is 3 seconds of sealing time. Use a plus or minus to increase or decrease that number to the desired amount of time you're going to seal, and that's all determined by also your heat setting that you have on the controller that will help determine how much time. But through a test, you can adjust that, you can adjust the heat, or you can adjust the time. Every type of plastics and films and trays all have their own very specific heat. Uh, settings that require for you. Some take a much hotter uh, temperature in order to seal, and some obviously a much cooler time. So you have to do a test to find out exactly what you should be using. So we'll just say we'll go to five. So five seconds of sealing time. 
and then go back to the vacuum, and now our program is set. So all you're going to do is run the machine with five seconds of sealing time. That's all this function, this program, is going to do. Now, I'm going to set up another program for you. It's going to be program two. And that's going to have a gas flush option. So now we're going to add some vacuum time because we have to do vacuum. We want to pull all the air out of the, of the cup or the tray. So we're going to put some time on here. Say we run about maybe 15 seconds of vacuum, which is maybe more than you need or less, depending on the size of your tray or, or how much gas you're going to be flushing. You shift over to gas. Now you're going to have to have an amount of gas that's equal to the amount of vacuum pressure. So it's really important now to pay a lot of attention to your vacuum gauge. Okay. So when you pull a vacuum, you pull a complete full vacuum, you have to equalize the pressure back with equal amount of gas that you've removed, of, uh, of oxygen that you've removed, to equalize the pressure in the tray. If you don't, then you'll crush the tray if you don't have enough gas. Or you'll pop the, the, the you'll pop the tray, or you'll blow gas out of the, of the cylinder or out of the chamber, uh, over gassing, so and wasting the gas. So really important that you have the same amount of vacuum that you take out is equal to the same amount of gas you put in. Have it equal. It can be slightly higher if you want to have a dome tray, or it can be slightly lower if you want to have a con or a convex cave or a concave type of tray. If you want a concave tray, then you would have a little bit less gas than your vacuum pressure. You want a convex tray, you would have a little bit more gas than your, than your vacuum pressure. So those are things you have to test until you get it to right where you want it to be. So we'll switch over right now to the gas, and then we're going to add some gas time. This machine does a very quick vacuum cycle. Uh, there is a reservoir inside the chamber or inside the machine that has a reserve of gas all the time. So the gas is ready to go for this chamber at every single cycle. That it reloads in between each cycle to build the pressure back up in that, in that cylinder so that there's plenty of gas available so that you're not restricted to a maybe a half inch gas line to try to gas flush this chamber. It will take a very long time. That definitely will take more time than you want to spend waiting for the gas flush. So you're looking at a maximum of two seconds of gas time required. Now, your pressure is set by a regulator inside the machine. So you have to adjust the regulated pressure so that you can achieve, so you don't over gas, or that you don't under gas. So it's a combination, kind of like a recipe, a combination of the time and the pressure you put in for gas, but take into account also your time and your vacuum pressure. So all those things have to be taken into account to achieve a perfect map trick. Then you move over to your seal, and it's the same thing as before. You need to have a seal time, the adequate amount of sealing time and temperature that, that is, you know, it's very specific to a tray. And like I said, every tray is different. Every type of plastic material is different. It requires even more or less heat or time to seal. And you'll have to do a test to determine what that is. Basically, after you finish setting your settings, you go back to vacuum, and you're ready to Right now, what we're going to do as best we can is follow it through taking this roll of film and mounting it on the machine, and then after that, he'll go through step by step, feeding it through the machine's guides and into the rewind mechanism. Go ahead, Rick. All right, well, the first thing you do is get your film. You need to determine which side of the film is your sealing side. In this situation, the sealing surface of the film is on the inside. So we're going to make sure that the film runs up all the way top. If you don't do that, you're going to end up with your sealing side up, and you don't want that. So basically, we're going to slide it there. And you'll also notice, uh, if you see, there's a diagram right here, and this is going to help you also. And it'll show that the film is rolling over the top. So you want the film rolling over the top. Now this is the basically a, the plate that's going to clamp the film on. And you'll see these bolts right here. And there's slots. I don't know if you can see the film, but I'm going to try to show you. One has, was, is rolled all the way through and one is not. And that's the locking hole right there. And that's the one we're going to slide through. So we're going to slide it through on the one that's rolled all the way through first. 
we were going to turn it, and then basically we're going to screw this screw until this goes into the one that's not milled all the way through, and that's going to put pressure on the roll. So position the roll, tighten this screw all the way down, tight until your roll is locked in, and that's how you load the roll with them. So bring your film up, and the first thing, like I said earlier, if you see the diagram, let me show you first. You're going to roll it underneath and over the top. And this basically is a pressure bar on a spring, and that's going to keep tension on the roll. And then you're just going to slack, and you're going to slack in the film, and you'll get a bad seal. So I'm going to roll over the top, and bring it back up. And then go over the top of these two rollers, and then down, okay? And we're going to come around over here to the back of the machine. We're going to feed the film through to the bottom. Okay. We'll take the film right here. And we'll pull it through. And we're going to feed it underneath this little roller here. And we're going to pull it out. And you notice that the roller arm is in the up position, and that's what I did with the switch we talked about earlier. You see how that really drops and raises? So we want it up right now. Make sure it's going through here. Make sure it's flat, straight, in position. When you get it right there, you're going to go ahead and lower that down. Next step is to pull this pin out right here. And this is a pin that holds the pin in place. Rotate the arm around. Lay the pin on the outside of the film. And there's a hole on the end right there. Slot it in. Then take your film roller. Roll your film up. Okay. Keep it tight. That's it. Now, one other point I want to make over here. One thing I want to you know, point out to you is make sure if you're going to print a film, your mark is going to be on the end of the film. It'll be a small black mark. This is the sensor right here that will wait to see that mark. When it sees that mark, it's going to start timing so that you can position your film properly. So make sure the film is in the slot of the, of the sensor. Okay. So that's basically uh, very simply how to build the film. Video is we're going to watch Rick make the couple of changes you have to do on the control panel to set up a gas cycle, which is going to a program where you've incorporated gas and also making sure to turn the gas on because there is a gas on off switch on the microprocessor unit. So go ahead, Rick, and show us how it's done. All right, well, first thing you're going to do is you're going to Change the program. In this case, we're using program number 14. Make sure you hold it until the 14 selection. And this is the program I set up to do the gas selection or the gas or the map packaging. Make sure that you turn your gas on by pushing the gas switch, and you'll see the gas light turn on on the control right here. And that basically ensures you that it's running gas. Okay, when you see the 14 is flashing, it tells us we're definitely in the uh, we save that program. Okay. And it really is that simple. Make sure you turn your, your vacuum pump on right here with the vacuum pump switch. You hear the pump turn on. So everything's ready to go. We got our gas turned on. We got our vacuum pump turned on. We made all of our testing and adjustments and everything. All you have to do is switch the program. Make sure you use the motor trays. Push the two switches at the same time, hold them until it goes into the first. The first thing you'll see is this tiny vacuum right now. If you watch the video, it's easy to move around. You'll see the vacuum pressure. You can see it at this center, 16 seconds. So, just about to show the vacuum. Now it's passing. You see the gas moving down, losing the pressure. That's because we're equalizing the pressure with the gas. Right now it's in the seal. Now it's cooling. Now the thing is coming up. Make sure you can put the pump trays up for you. Remove the trays. Yeah. So it's up. Go back.
gives you a basic overview of the VT400 map face here. And we just hope you have a great time producing your product on it. Thank you. Well, that gives you a basic overview of the VT400 map face here. And we just hope you have a great time producing your product on it. Thank you.